Minute J Rock is here. It is time for the great one, the YouTube People's Chat. Oh, to do another reaction, baby. We about to check out a couple of gameplay videos, presentations from Developer Direct 2024 from Xbox. Yesterday, we got the new Indiana Jones game, Avowed, and Hellblade 2. Hollywood. J-Rock. Hands come back to you, too. What is happening in 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 with the millions? <laughs> and the millions of J-Rock's fans from all over the world, baby. That's right, baby. J-Rock is here smack dab in the People's Palace on the corner of Know Your Road Boulevard and Jabaroni Drive. We're about to check out some gameplay presentations from Developer Direct 2024 by Xbox. Uh, it's a new saga, Hellblade 2. Um, Avowed and Indiana Jones, Dr. Jones. We about to see what those games are all about. Make sure you lay it L smack it down on that subscribe button. All right, you enjoying the content? Hit that thumbs up button. Let the algorithm know that the rock is here. All right, and make sure you want to send some donations, donations, gifts. Hit that super thanks button as well. But we not gonna waste some more time, baby. Welcome to Obsidian Entertainment. I'm so proud to share with you our upcoming fantasy action RPG, Avowed. Avowed is an adventure into the heart of the living lands, a frontier at the edge of the known world, where you must put a stop to a mysterious spiritual plague and discover a secret at the heart of the living lands. At Obsidian, we love creating worlds with deep themes, dynamic gameplay, and thoughtful reactivity and Avowed is no different. We set out to blend the believable and fantastical to give players a world and experience like no other. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it's strange. It's one of the most incredible settings in the world of Aora. There's gonna be a lot of great secrets to discover, one of which has a really personal connection to you as the player character, and you're gonna have a great time getting to know those secrets and leaving your mark on the world. And when it comes to encounters, our combat brings the best of the moment-to-moment -moment fun that comes with action-oriented gameplay and the depth and breadth of choice that you get with an RPG. Here to talk more about Avowed's combat is Gabriel Paramo, Gameplay Director. Here at Obsidian, our team's overarching goal is to empower you with choice. So we developed a flexible combat system that allows you to quickly swap from spellcasting and sharpshooting to melee combat. We want to give you the freedom to mix and match your loadout to fit the way you want to play from moment to moment, uninterrupted. For all battles, you can combine a variety of weapons, attacks, and abilities for tactical advantages against a wide range of enemy types. This is just it's like not just hacking and slashing. You're making real-time decisions about when to use your abilities, powerful melee attacks, blocks, parries, and special attacks. If you choose to approach combat with a one-handed wand, it feels quick and snappy when dealing damage to enemies at mid-range. Using the Tanglefoot ability, you can stop enemies in their tracks, giving you the opportunity to focus on weaker or tougher combatants in an intentional and controlled manner. It's important to pay attention to the types of enemies you're dealing with. Some units are extremely defensive, some are brutishly difficult, and others you must make sure you prioritize or their healing capabilities will put you in a tough spot. To help with the different encounters you will face, we provide customizable loadouts that can be quickly switched during combat. That means you can play however you want. Equip a sword and shield and charge into battle. Dual wield pistols and control the encounter mid-range. Or even dual wield wands to feel like a gunslinging mage. You could use your enchanted wand to freeze enemies and then use your offhand weapons power attack to shatter them. We've worked hard to keep you constantly engaged as battles unfold okay. by creating a balance between pressure and manageability during combat. Players will have ample choices for how to build and progress their envoy in the world of the Living Lands as they get to know the game and the story and explore the many diverse regions. Some quests in Avowed will have you make difficult decisions with profound consequences. 
Like this side quest you may encounter in Shatterscarp, the third region you'll explore on your journey through the Living Lands. As you're exploring, you come across the bodies of these fallen soldiers. And as you explore the remains of the battle, it's up to you to determine who, if anyone, is at fault. Just the four of us. Manu, Kiri, Naoki, and me. Character Training under Captain Wiki. Trying to keep their born safe. In other words, you're a gang of vigilantes. Not that I'm one to judge. Here. Take my badge. Take everyone's. Our families deserve to know we fought and died for them. Making the right choice isn't always what it seems. We embrace moral nuance and gray areas, trusting players to make tough decisions in complicated situations. My, my squad and I rested in the cave by the water last night, and as we were sleeping, we were ambushed by those miserable Zorips. I was so surprised, and it was so dark. I just got separated from everyone else. Look, I, I, I can't face those monsters alone. But I have to know if anyone else made it out. Of course he did. Sergeant Asui never has a thought he won't say out loud. So what did he tell you? That Captain Ruiki was sick? That I was paranoid? That I was a dumb baby? I heard it all often, and loudly. Wait, if you found Sergeant Asui, why is he not here with you? What happened? At the end of the quest, you have a choice. When you confront Private Naoki, if you believe the story he's told you, you can hand over the badges and let him go back home. You're right. Real battle isn't something you can prepare for, is it? It's not my fault. No, they... They should have never have camped in the cave. I'll take the badges. I'm going back to Thirdborn. But if you confront him, if you believe that he fled the site of the battle as an act of cowardice, then no he might challenge you to a fight to reclaim world. his honor. Either I'll way, when you return to town, you'll see the consequences of your actions and the choices you made during this quest. Creating an immersive experience like Avowed is anchored in the world we build. Art director Matt Hansen and the team have worked to create a unique, colorful, and dynamic visual style. From the outset, we knew that we wanted Avowed setting to feel rich, weird, and wonderful. We found inspiration in a wide swath of real-world cultures, helping us create a unique RPG experience. By contrasting the vibrant with the dull, or verdant spaces with sickly ones, we can better deliver complex emotional experiences for our players. The Living Lands is a continent of untamed valleys with widely varied biomes, from luxuriant forests to volcanic wastes. And each of those regions itself is a conflux of storied landscapes. All of the regions have a lot of special things associated with them, but I have a deep place in my heart for Shatterscarp. As you're wandering the wastes of Shatterscarp, you might notice off in the distance a vibrant jewel of color. By transitioning from destitute, muted tones of a wasteland of sand and marching in towards a beautiful oasis, there's the opportunity there for life, for adventure, and even a little danger. We hope you've enjoyed this look at Avowed. We're thrilled to share more about the game in the coming months, and we can't Three, wait five. for you to explore the living lands when Avowed yes, launches this lots. fall. Hi, I'm Don Matthews, studio head here at Ninja Theory in Cambridge, UK. We're now in the final months of development on Senua Saga Hellblade 2, and the team is working hard to bring you an unforgettable journey into Senua's unique world and her battle for survival, where we have once again combined high fidelity and immersive presentation with a shorter, narrative-led experience that focuses on the things that we really care about, and that we hope you care about too. Senua is back with a new quest. She wants to stop the Vikings who raided her village right at their source, in Iceland. But not just her quest has changed. Senua herself has grown since the first Hellblade. She's made peace with her past and is no longer in such fear of her visions and voices. 
While the Furies are still her constant companions, she encounters new people along the way, some of which will value her unique perspective and others who will reject it. Little by little, this settlement became my tribe. In the game, Senua arrives in 10th century Iceland on the trail of the Vikings who have been enslaving her people. In the story, we're trying to be as faithful to history as we can up to a point, establishing a solid framework and then building more surreal elements on top. Senua will face up to giants who have plunged the land into chaos and which in turn has seen the rise of the Joiga, a violent threat that has swept through the settlements that she'll discover. Senua will make new enemies and also new allies who will come to see her unique perspective as a beacon of hope. And she'll discover along with us how this viewpoint can have its advantages. Senua is a Celtic warrior who experiences psychosis, seeing things that other people don't, hearing voices and having unique beliefs about the world around her. To bring Senua's perspective of the world to life in a truthful way, we have once again worked closely with Professor Paul Fletcher at the University of Cambridge, as well as people with lived experience of psychosis. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's terrifying. Players will find themselves traversing beautiful and hostile environments, seeking answers from patterns and signs that Senua sees in her own unique way and battling through encounters with enemies that will push Senua to her limits. On Saga, we've taken everything to the next level. With a new motion capture space, a bigger stage team, a stunt crew and a new cast, we spent a lot of time planning the motion capture shoots, thinking of what events would be good to bring into this fight. Like, how can we make this fight feel different from the previous fight? We have all new combat for the sequel. One of our key goals was the ability to actually tell a story throughout it. It does feel very different from the first game, but it's very brutal and you're very invested in it. Senua isn't a superhero. She's fighting for survival, and we want the player to feel her struggle in every step of her journey. We want the player to always feel like they just scraped through, just survived it. Mel knows Senua better than anyone, better than I do. Her instincts are amazing, and she really doesn't need much help from me. On stage, our main focus is storytelling. So I get to watch the actors and see all the beautiful expressions on their faces. And then I have to wait a little while and then I get to see that all again in game, in costume, on location, everything. It's, it's a great experience, a great process. Every discipline in the studio is unified in achieving a deep level of immersion to help suspend your disbelief and pull you into Senua's story. We were lucky enough to do a few reference gathering trips in Iceland. You have to be there. The, the sense of scale, everything is incredible. And you see a scene or you see a small section of the game and you're like, yeah, that, that works, that's amazing. Senua experiences reality differently. And a part of this manifest in the voices she hears. She will these voices come to life through binaural audio, which provides a good representation of this type of auditory hallucinations. As we focus in immersion, uh, binaural audio is perfect for this because through headphones, you surround yourself in a three-dimensional space. In the first game, we only apply to the voices that Senua listens in her head. In this game, through a spatial audio technology and uh, some extra little things within the game, there is music that is binaural. Every single sound has the potential to be binaural, so everything is specialized around you, and it's a very beautiful experience. What will they do to her? What will we do to us? Music is a strange language in the sense that it speaks to our emotions fast and deep. It's not only about quality, it's about personality. So when you listen to Hellblade, you know it's Hellblade. 
On the music, we are working with Hailun, which for me is a personal privilege because I really admire them. We feel their craft, their depth, their meaning in the music. It really connects with our game and elevates it to something really special. We are also working with a heavy metal singer, throat singers, and our very own Furies. They sing so beautiful, and we add that binaural touch of music. So this all creates a very immersive and a very special and unique experience. Our mission here at Ninja Theory is to craft life-changing art with game-changing tech. And that's our aim in Senua Saga Hellblade 2, is to not only see where Senua goes next, but to deliver something really meaningful for our players. My hope is that they will really connect to Senua as a character, and even if they can't really relate to what she's going through, maybe they know someone that relates to that character and they can then understand that person better. Well, I don't want to sound cheesy, but in a way I'm Senua, right? She exists and doesn't. It exists through all of her work, through every ninja. So we all are Senua, and we are creating this character that grows and grows and grows and grows and keeps growing and keeps changing. So that makes it real. I'm so proud of the love, care and passion our team here at Ninja Theory are putting into Senua's saga Hellblade 2. Our hope is to not only create a game that is great to play, but to craft an experience that leaves you thinking and feeling. From our combat gameplay through to our action set pieces, from our cinematic scenes to our puzzle solving, everything is crafted in service of Senua's journey. A journey that you can embark on on May 21st. Hi, this is Indiana Jones. Hej och välkommen till Uppsala Sverige här hos Machine Games. We are really excited to finally be able to share our work on Indiana Jones. Since the first film came out, Indiana Jones has always represented the ultimate adventure. Even today, it's one of the most iconic franchises in pop culture. In this game, you aren't just playing as Indy, you are Indiana Jones. You will see through his eyes and experience a journey that we hope lives up to the proud legacy of Indiana Jones. When Todd Howard first told us about his vision for the game, we knew we would be a very good fit to help bring it to life. I've wanted to make an Indiana Jones game forever. I'd had this idea for what it would be like and the story, what Indy was going after, what period of his life it was in, what kind of arc he was gonna have. And as the years went on, I thought, who would be like the best studio in the world to make this? And it was my friends at Machine Games. I can remember pitching Lucasfilm on the game and being, you know, a little bit nervous because look, it's, you know, Indiana Jones and their response was just overwhelmingly positive and just that excitement has bled through the whole project and they have just been so trusting and supportive of everything that we want to do with the game. It's been a long time, I've been a fan of this my whole life and I couldn't be more excited to show you what the team here has been up to. Let's take our first look at the new Indiana Jones game. Let me tell you what you are missing, Dr. Jones. While you were playing your pointless game, I was playing you. You're wondering if maybe you should have built yourself a life of meaning instead of ending up here, dead and forgotten in the sands of Africa. <laughs> Yeah. Myths. First person. History. Yeah. Just different ways to interpret the past. Thousands of years of humanity's thoughts and beliefs scattered and buried. Just waiting to be found. You can't just run away from your problems. 
Indiana. Watch me. Throughout history, mankind has built sites of great spiritual significance. If you were to draw a line through these ancient sites around the globe, you get a perfectly aligned circle. I've had run-ins with these guys before. Trust me. It ain't a walk in the park. Okay, then. Let's see if you can keep up. What do you mean if I can keep up? Okay. Patron of the fallen angels. Protector of the... Chukulimani. The Great Circle. <laughs> you have any idea how old that was? Indiana Jones is such an iconic character, and he means so much to so many people. Everyone here at the studio has their own indie stories and memories. Most of us grew up with his adventures and have been fans of the movies and the character for years. He's a brilliant archaeologist, he's a charismatic everyman, he's passionate and determined. And for us, he's synonymous with adventure. Now we have the opportunity to tell a new Indiana Jones story for a modern gaming audience. Our game is all about putting you in Indy's shoes, letting you see and feel what he sees and feels. For us at Machine Games, we do that best through first person. It's the ideal perspective to bring you into the rich, exciting and interactive world we've built. We believe that being up close and personal to the adventure is key, making each action feel like your own. Whether it's cracking your whip, solving puzzles in ancient temples, or seeing your knuckles go bloody in a fist fight, all of these moments are much more intense in first person. But we still want you to have those moments. Seeing his iconic silhouette with the hat, the whip, and so for things like cutscenes and environmental traversal, we pull the camera back for a third person view. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is set between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade. When our game begins, Indiana is working at Marshall College. He wakes up in the middle of the night to the sounds of a break-in and rushes to confront the thief in the college museum. The mysterious giant of a man makes off with what seems to be a historically insignificant artifact, sparking Indiana's curiosity. Who the hell are you? Following the trail, Indiana heads to the Vatican, hoping to learn why this particular relic was stolen, and discovers that things aren't what they appear. He starts pulling at the strings of a mystery, and it all unravels until he has no choice but to see it through to the end, whatever the end may be. On next plane to Rome, stop. Need help, stop. Maybe in Vatican, stop. We always talk about how clever Indiana Jones is. That had to be one of our guiding principles when we were thinking about the type of game we were making. It wouldn't be Indy if he wasn't using his wits to get through the situation. The most authentic Indiana Jones experience we can make is the one that makes you think first. Getting the hang of this. Sure, there will be some obstacles that will be more easily overcome with the revolver or a gun taken from a disarmed guard. But I think most of the time you'll have more fun and, to be honest, a more genuine Indy experience by finding more clever ways to solve a problem. We always want to be offering more solutions, whether it's trying a different path through the environment to get around enemies, observing enemy patrols and using them to your advantage, or using the tools at your disposal, like the whip. It's an amazing global adventure with action propelling you through your journey. 
we have these really diverse environments for you to explore. Indy's journey will take him to the forgotten temples of Sukhothai, the pyramids of Egypt, the snow-peaked Himalayas, and beyond. We look carefully at each location and the time period the game is set in, and we're trying to make it as authentic and accurate as possible. We love creating rich, vibrant worlds, and in this game, we also had the goal of making it feel like a true cinematic Indiana Jones adventure. One of the biggest ways to do that is with the music. John Williams is the original composer for the indie films, and we're really lucky to have found Gordie Hubb, a composer who's been able to capture Williams' essence with his score for The Great Circle. We also take a very movie-like approach to things like cinematics. We're very physical with our production style. We use a lot of stunt actors. Things like this help us bridge the gap between making a game and making a movie. And of course, our characters do a lot to help bring the world to life as well. Next to Indy, Gina is our other main protagonist. Where Indy is pursuing answers just for the sake of curiosity, Gina has a personal stake in getting to the bottom of the core mystery. Gina is an investigative reporter who has a lot riding on this adventure. She's been tracking a lead for some time, and now she's found an ally in this determined American professor. Their paths are intertwined, and they'll need each other in order to get to the bottom of this mystery. Okay, then. Let's see if we can keep up. Fight. What do you mean if I can keep up? We always love our villains and think we might have found our favorite one yet in Emmerich Voss. He's this intensely psychological man. He's obsessed with the human mind and manipulating it. He's highly intelligent and the perfect foil for Andy. They're both brilliant people, compelled by their passions and obsessions, but driven down wildly different roads. He creeps up on you and gets under your skin like he gets under Indy's skin. It's captivating. Dead and forgotten in the sense of Africa. One of our models for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is adventure first. But in every indie adventure, there are always those moments where he finds himself in the action. That's been one of those balancing acts for us, and we've ended up with this sort of hybrid experience that mixes melee combat, stealth, and gunplay. How you approach any given situation is up to you. You may choose to sneak around an enemy patrol, or maybe you'll just pick up a shovel and whack them on the back of their head. And when you can't use your wits, you got Indy's most iconic tool. Just like you see in the movies, one of our goals has been to make the whip as fun and multi-purposed as possible. We want it integrated into every aspect of the game. You can use it as a traversal tool to make your way around the environment. You can use it as a distraction. Come and on, yes, you, don't know you can absolutely use it in combat. Everything you'd expect from Indy's whip and hopefully a little bit more. Puzzles are a key feature in our game. The spirit of discovery is so important to Indiana Jones. Obviously, there are a handful of puzzles on the main path, but a lot of the puzzles are optional and are just there for the players who want to experience them. Epic traps, small secrets, and hidden puzzles that blend right in with their surroundings. One thing I love about our game is the level of interactivity that we have. We have this world of mystery where anything could potentially hide a secret. The more you look, the more you'll discover. It sounds like a Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I want to thank you all for joining us for our big reveal of Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Machine Games is known for creating these roller coaster experiences with huge set pieces, surprising twists, and immersive narratives. It's exciting for us that we have been able to stay so true to the Indiana Jones franchise and create such an authentic experience while still being able to showcase what makes us us. We are making a game for everyone, whether you are very familiar with the franchise or not. Because at the heart of Indiana Jones is an incredible adventure, and I think that's something everyone wants to be part of. I'm also very excited to announce that Indiana Jones and the Great Circle will be coming later this year, 
and we cannot wait to share more soon. this um i'm intrigued i ain't sold on indiana jones same with a vow uh hellblade 2 yeah i was sold on that uh but i gotta see more from them uh, the thing about most a lot of these xbox games the character models at least in the avowed games look so last gen to me all right uh look better in uh hellblade 2 and any other jump but yeah about it looked just like elder scrolls uh, but i don't know uh if they're the same studio or not we got to wait and see and check it out but uh, i'm interested j-rock has been, been interested in seeing more about these games but one thing is for sure even after seeing these games can't touch sony man these exclusive I'm, I'm happy xbox finally got some good exciting exclusives more than likely be playing all three of these games ain't sony man it ain't sony sorry you know and, and i and j-rock don't get into all the rudy poo console wars or whatever the case may be I got an Xbox and a PlayStation. I got a Nintendo Switch, and I'm gonna be getting a uh, a, a PC to be playing those games. J Rock is a gamer. J Rock don't care what platform it's on. If he wants to play it, he'll play it. You know, I don't have no loyalty to no particular console, but I'm just telling you, for my money, right? The people's the people's uh, the people's money. I got to go with Sony's exclusives. All right. But I am waiting for another Gears of War, all right? I need another Gears of War from Sony. I mean, from Microsoft, all right? Because they haven't got given us a new one for the Xbox 360. At least I don't think. Was five on? Was five on the Series X? Or was it on the uh, One X? I gotta check to see. But be that as it may, post your comments down below. Let J Rock know which thought of his reaction to this. Video, no rhyme intended on that line. And if you enjoyed the great one's reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Stay tuned for my next video. Mamba, GG, and Wakanda forever. Here goes mine! La, 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 what Jay? Ah, uh, he's.